The experiment on exploring the properties of gases will take a little bit different twist than, than the other experiments have had. Most of the other experiments have been fairly well laid out, uh, well maybe an operational word, laid out to the point they have excruciating detail to exactly what to do next and exactly what to do next. This experiment is a little bit more exploratory in nature. We can actually work with variables of gases. You can design your own types of experiments. The outcomes we're after here, we want you to be able to work with gas properties to make predictions about gas behavior, given some variables, what happens if I do this and that and the other thing. The second part is we want you to identify the key gas laws by name. This would include things like Charles Law, Boyle's Law, um, the combined gas law, things of that nature. And then the third thing is we want you to be able to construct experiments to look at how these variables are interact, interrelate with each other. The gas variables, as you've learned in class, are pressure. And that's one of the things that affects the properties of a gas. The pressure does. The pressure is a force per unit area. Usually measured in units like atmospheres, pascals, bars, millimeters, mercury, inches, mercury, psi, and many others. Volume is just the space occupied by the gas. Not the volume of the molecules themselves, but the space taken up by that gas. Usually liters, milliliters, something along those lines. Temperature is always in a Kelvin, in an absolute scale. So the zero of that scale is the zero of the universe. Kelvin is the one we're used to, but you can also use things like Rankine, where Rankine has Fahrenheit size degrees. We don't use that, we focus on the Kelvin. And the moles, they need no further introduction because you've seen moles a lot in the semester. The same moles you already know about. When you look at four variables, you understand their interaction. It might be a little bit daunting to look at them all at once. And so what you might think about is looking at a pair or maybe three of them at the same time. So that could be, uh, looking at two together like this in a pair and keeping the other two constant. And so down here I've put the tab together a table. These are all the possible combinations of two variables, starting with four, and then also I have one with three variables down in here. Notice in here that if the PV is changing, then constant variables are N and T. They all add up to four variables all the way across. These are the named laws. You've probably seen those in class as well. I want to point out something about the term constant that we use here. Constant means that this variable had the same value before I measured it as it does after I measured it. It does not mean it stayed the same the whole time. So I can go from 5 atmospheres up to 50 down. I can do all sorts of things all over the place. If I end up at 5 atmospheres, then we said the pressure was constant for that process. We look first at a few things on the lab quest, which hopefully you're somewhat familiar with. We look at time-based measurements, events with entry, selected events. We'll look at those types of things. Kind of make sure we know how those things set up. And then we'll look at a few experiments to set up, and that'll be the, the bulk of what this presentation is about. In the time-based measurement, that's where you get a value. You have a sensor plugged in. You're going to record something as a function of time. You could have two or three sensors plugged in and record that as a function of time. Um, it is a default setting when these things come up. That's what you'll see first. The example I've done below, uh, I do the audio thing. And I messed up in the audio thing a couple times. I said I was trying to show you how to make a pressure time graph when I was really trying to show you how to make a pressure temperature graph, which I did, but I kept calling it the wrong thing. So if you're confused, that's my fault. Another mode we might use is events with entry. You've seen that in the visible spectra lab. You've also seen that in the conductivity lab, and that's another possibility of of a lab of a, a mode that you could use. So in this case, what usually happens in events with entry is you're measuring things using sensors, but there's one piece of information you have to put in by hand. Uh, you've seen it before in visible spectra. We'd put in the number of plastic strips we had or put in the concentration of food coloring. You saw it in conductivity or put in the volume in the burette. In this case, you'll see it very often putting in the volume of a gas sample. And then the last one we'll look at just briefly is selected events. In a selected event, it's going to take all the data from the sensors. You don't have to enter anything, anything in, but it'll just take the ones you want. This might be useful if you want to not take data for forever, have huge files and things like that. So I want to go in, if I'm heating something up and watching the pressure and temperature, just every few minutes I go over and click a selected event and take a pair of data points, and I'm good to go. So let's take a look at these and see what happens. Uh, I have two cautionary notes here to pay attention to. One is that you're going to heat a gas in a closed container. I think you probably know that's not a good idea. That means you want to make sure you don't go too high in your temperature, and in particular, you don't go too high in your pressure, and you can read your pressure the whole time. Your pressure shouldn't go over somewhere around uh, 150 kilopascals. Somewhere in that sort of vicinity is about how high it can go. Uh, it's like a, like a one and a half atmosphere somewhere in that vicinity. Your temperature shouldn't get up over about 35 or 40 or so, something like that. But more importantly, when you put your device together, if you take a, 
a stopcock and put it in an Erlenmeyer flask, don't cram it in there so it'll never come out. You don't want it leaking, but you want that stopcock to be able to pop off if the pressure is too high. That also means don't be staring down straight over the top of your experiment to see how it's going because it may pop off at any moment. So be, look, be alert to that. A uh, second thing we've just recently discovered is that um, folks are not paying attention to the fact that when you put the, the sensor connection into the lab quest, you should hear a snap, a click. That means it's locked in. When it locks in, it means somebody has to unlock it. So when you bring it back out, close in, there's a little lever, just press the lever in, pull it off, so make sure you unlock it and pull it back out. We have several that have broken locks on them, which means now they don't make good contact necessarily the whole time. When you put a sensor in, in this experiment, make sure you hear a nice clear, clear click, nice clean click. If you don't hear a nice clean click, check another analog port or another and there are three of them you can use to try to get those in but be alert to that make sure they snap into place and really make sure when you take them out you take them out correctly so you don't break the plastic out so let's take a look at some of the different ways you can set up the lab quest some of this you've seen before i've actually used some old video so let's take a look this. at setting up the lab quest with two sensors in it to read out information in this case about pressure and temperature so i have the pressure up in here he's plugged into channel two temperature is plugged into channel three uh, we're going to do a time-based run, so we can just take and there are a couple different ways we can do this. We can take and just do a time-based run where we'll just set it up, let it heat up as a function of time, just let it collect the data the whole time it does that. That's pretty easy to do. If I go up here to where it says time-based, I click on here on time-based, right here, it's a little slow, and tell I want to do time-based, let's say for 900, you might go to 1800 seconds or something if you want to, you just whatever you want to. You can always stop the run whenever you want, so I'm going to go to 1, 8, zero zero and that'll be done with that so i've got my time set when i come back and look at what my plot's going to look like let's go ahead and start the run so i take and i start the run and what i'll see in here is i have two graphs one is the temperature along here the pressure along here they're both plotted against time i really would like to see my pressure against time plot so instead of this what i'll do is I'll get rid of one of these graphs so you go up to the graph option click Tell it show graph, and we'll just tell it to show graph one, just for kicks. You can pick graph two if you want to, that's fine. And now I've still got temperature and time. I want to have pressure over here, and I want to have time down there. So I go back into graph again, go into my graph options, and I tell it, okay, let's make the x-axis be temperature, and let's go ahead and make the y-axis in this run be pressure. So I get rid of the temperature checkbox, click on the pressure checkbox, I tell it okay. And there's my data that will develop there. Now, this particular one I have set up with nothing. I have sensors on it, but I don't have it plugged into anything, so nothing's going to happen. I'll show you data uh, that will let you take a look at that and see how we manipulate the data. So as this run goes along, the temperature will be going up. The pressure will be going up likely as well. You'll see a nice curve to it, and you'll <clears throat> get a pretty good-looking set of data. Look at how we set an activity example. So entry, you can name like whatever that variable is you're putting in. In this case, we'll put in volume very often. So you can go ahead and type in volume, and that's fine. That's what we used in the conductivity one. Tell it you're done. We most likely don't, do not want to average over 10 seconds, even though we did in conductivity. Here we probably don't because it might fluctuate some while we're trying to hold things in place. Let's come back to here. You hit your start button. You hit the start button, you'll see down below you get the keep button down in the lower left hand corner. You click on that, and it will come back up and it will tell you, um, it'll ask you what the, what the volume is going to be that you're going to enter. There are a couple of ways of <clears throat> collecting data on a time based system, and so let's take a look another way and uh, a way for the collecting pressure temperature data, for example. Uh, you can do it where you collect it over time and take points like every half a second or something like that. So you have lots of data points at the end of it, and that's fine. You can work with those data. Or if you want to just make it a, a smaller set of data, one of the things you can do is instead of using the time-based mode up here, we're going to change this from time-based into what we call selected events. And so as this moves along, if you want to average over 10 seconds, once you hit the button, it'll average the pressure and temperature over 10 seconds. We can do that. I don't want to do that because we're increasing both of them. We don't expect them to be stable at this point in time. So I can take up here and click on OK and tell it, I, it says I have discarded, let me get rid of that data I had before. And now when I go into this mode, what will happen is this. I, 
I have this one again. I do not have sensors hooked up to this particular lab quest. I'll show you the results of this. But you see the little point bouncing around down there. That's talking about the pressure and the temperature at this point in time. If I take and I hit the keep button, what it will do is it will automatically keep that point and it keeps both values, keeps the pressure and temperature. You may have used the selected the events with entry before in which you have to enter data, but in this case you don't. It's just going to take whatever point that is. So I go on a little bit further. I want to take a point. So my imagine this. My water bath is heating up. My pressure is going up. I can click on keep again. And there I have another point that is kept. So my, my temperature has gone up or down a little bit. I don't have it hooked up to anything, so it might be fluctuating a little. And so I can take data points like that, and I can actually have a pretty good set of data that's relatively small, 10, 15 points, and be able to work with that as well. So let's take a look at a few let's take a look at a few trial types of experiments you might want to do in this particular uh, experiment of gas laws. One is you might be able to look at pressure volume types of experiments. So you can take a syringe, for example, it has volume markings on it. You can put a gas in it. You can, you can expand it, compress it, and measure the pressure as a function of volume. Now it keeps in constant temperature and number of moles. You can also look at looking at a number of moles and pressure experiment. In that case, what you think about is, well, the volume is related to how much stuff I have in it. So we can use that to kind of get a backwards value of uh, idea of what the moles look like. You can also take a look at experimental setup for a pressure temperature experiment where it's putting, putting a flask inside of a beaker of water can be heated up or cooled down or something along those lines. But you can be encouraged in this experiment to experiment as much as you can with different types of experiments. Prior to the experiment you're about to see, I took and I set up the lab quest for events with entry uh, so that we could read a pressure, put in the volume at the same time at the same point. And so if we watch what goes on here experimentally, here's what we're going to see. As I grab a hold of the syringe, we're going to put a sample of air. Air is our easiest gas to sample in this case. Any gas we put in there will do the same thing. I'm going to take the syringe, bring it about halfway up, which is about 10 centimeters. You might notice that 10 centimeters is somewhere around the, there's like three little rubber rings around it. It's the front one is the one you measure from. So put 10, centimeter, 10, 10 cubic centimeters of air into there. I'm going to take and let it sit. I want to take and keep the pressure of it, so I hit the keep button, and then I just typed in what the volume is, 15. Now I'm going to take it and move it back down to 10, into 5 milliliters, hit the keep button, go in here, punch in a 5, and tell it OK, and now I've got a couple data points. So I can continue along these lines for quite a while. Again, it's probably helpful in these not to put in the averaging over 10 seconds here. We're going out to 15, because when you average over 10 seconds, if you don't hold it, steady the whole time you're actually fluctuating the volume while you're fluctuating the pressure at the same time. Let's take a look at how we can change moles and know something about moles. Remember moles will be pretty small in this case with gases. Remember it refers to numbers of atoms and molecules and that sort of thing. What we can do is realize it's sort of proportional to what the volume is going to be. So let's take a look at how we can change, look at a number of moles and volume relationship and see what happens there. So to start my little video up, we're going to take, and we've got it set up at about 15 cc's, 10 cc's on the syringe in here. Take and hook it up in the pressure sensor, hit the keep button, and then type in whatever that volume is that you have it set at. And they don't have to be perfectly 10, 11, just read the volumes well. You can read them to the tenths place at least on here. Actually, probably read them to the hundredths place on here. Uh, tenths place, sorry. And so you come in here, and then what we do is we're going to change the, right here, what I did is I took the syringe, backed it out here, took, un disconnected it from the pressure gauge, pulled it back to here, so I changed how many molecules I have in there, basically. So I have a whole number, new set of molecules. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put it back into the pressure gauge. And we want to keep, we want to keep constant volume. <clears throat> That's my dog. We want to keep constant volume, and uh, we're changing moles. We're changing uh, pressure actually, and keeping the volume constant. So if I take a look at this. I go then back to 15, back to the 10 cc's I started with. Back into here. Read the pressure. Hit the keep button and type in what the pressure is going to be. So you can take and adjust how many moles of molecules you have and just relate it to the volume. So just call it call it 10 is some number of moles, 15 is some number of moles, 5 is some number of moles. You don't really care how many moles are in those particular <coughs> excuse me, in those particular samples. To do the pressure temperature experiment what we'll look at is really just 
uh, using a, your Erlenmeyer flask out of your drawer and a 400 milliliter beaker, putting some water in it. You notice there's a stopper up on top. This is a stopper I tell you, don't make, make sure it's not too tight. It needs to be a relief point if you need it. It also has a stopcock. Up there you can vent the stopcock when need be. Also it's got the tubing that goes all the way over the gas pressure sensor. If you take any kind of pressure temperature data, it'll look kind of like, well, hopefully it'll look a lot better than what I have in here. I kind of did it in a hurry. But it's a good relationship between the pressure and temperature fairly easily from that particular slide. So this is the kind of way you can set up. You can set up with different temperature baths around the room and just insert it. Use your events, use your selected events thing just to record data. Or if you want to set up your own and just heat it gradually, you can do that as well.